Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Paul Brown Show. This evening, my guest will be Mr. Alonzo Lumpkin. He's the boxing director at the Rock Hill Boxing Club. How you doing there, Mr. Lumpkin? I'm doing pretty good. How are you today, sir? Great, great. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, um, my name is Alonzo Lumpkin. I've been uh, involved with boxing since uh, around 1999. Uh, graduate of Winthrop University, uh, been in the community uh, coaching boxing for about three years now. So uh, you, you should, you should, I should try to make some noise. You should hear about me. Rock Hill Boxing Club. How long has that been in existence? The Rock Hill Boxing Club itself has been in existence uh, since the early night, early '80s. Uh, and that was ran at that time by Marge Hammett and uh, the late uh, Charlie Hammett. Okay. You're located at the Emmett Scott Recreation Center. Tell the audience a little bit about that center. Um, the Recreation Center, uh, Ms. Latoya is running the center right now and she's doing an awesome job. Um, the center is a uh, host to where uh, many programs for uh, uh, definitely underprivileged kids. Uh, a lot of young adults would come in and, and they will have uh, uh, programs as well as uh, uh, basketball leagues. And, and we're in there involved with them as well with the, uh, with the boxing. Um, they've been doing the program. Like I say, they've been doing pretty well with the program and definitely uh, more support is needed. But at this point, we're doing pretty good. As the coach of the boxing club, what do you see as one of the big reasons for guys becoming boxers? Um, uh, it's either they want to prove how macho they are or they want to become uh, defensive. Uh, at this point, there's a lot of sh students or guys that will come in for uh, training so they, they won't get bullied. You know, uh, there's a lot of guys being bullied in school, and I think that school bullying is, uh, is pretty much on the rise. Well, and uh, a lot of parents will bring their, their children in for, for that reason. And then you have other guys that, you know, they want to prove that they got what it takes to be macho on the street or, or you know, they want to prove the manhood, and then they'll come in the ring. So it, there's a lot of reasons that, you know, guys would, would come in the gym. But uh, for the most reason, I, I see that it's it's – the bullying. I see that it's the bullying. I see that, you know, guys come in, um, they may not have what it takes to, to be able to, to defend themselves, and they, they, they want to become interested in boxing. What inspires you to want to be a boxing coach, director? I think, I know that I've been blessed with the talent um, to, to box myself, um, and I have a vision. I have a vision that I, I can see things uh, in the sport of boxing, I can see things um, technically in boxing that a lot of people don't don't recognize and they don't pick up on them very detailed when it comes down to the sport. Um, boxing itself is it, it, just my passion. And I think that uh, my dad, he, he boxed, and, and a few other members in my family but have a tradition of boxing. So it just kind of, I guess it just kind of comes on down to me. I went to one of your boxing amateur matches and I saw some of your boxers and you have some great boxers. What does it take to be a good and great boxer in today's world? A good boxer. A good boxer is, is a person that can listen, obey instructions, and perform them. A great boxer is a thinker. I teach my guys to be thinkers. I teach them to be great boxers. Um, being able to think in the ring, being able to think in very unusual and, and definitely uh, harsh, sometimes harsh circumstances. Somebody's throwing punches at you and you got to move. That's a, that's a pretty unusual circumstance, I would say. Um, being able to think and know what to do, being able to control themselves in the meantime is, is what I teach. I, I'm, a, I'm a defensive uh, boxer. I teach defense first. I teach them how to defend themselves. And, and we will counter uh, uh, an attack. As an amateur, a lot of your boxers, they have like a job that they have to go to or whatever school, and then they come to training. How do they have to get disciplined enough to want to train after a hard day's work? I, 
I have some guys, most of my guys, I have a few students, but most of my guys are, are coming in after work. Some work 12 hours. And actually I have one that's going to be participating in the uh, North-South uh, competition today. And uh, he's, he's been working 12 hours um, throughout the week. And he comes in, he gives it what he has. Um, but again, you know, boxing is so much more mental than people really realize that it takes that much more mental fortitude to push yourself when you've worked 12 hours, when you've, when you've been in school uh, for six to, to eight hours or so, and, and, and you've, you're sitting at a desk and you're studying, and, and, and then you have work, after, work to do after that, and sometimes a part-time job. Um, but it's, it's those guys that come back to the gym. It's not a lot of them, uh, but it's those guys that come back after uh, they've been beat down all day doing whatever they have to do to survive, and then they come in the gym and, and let it all out. So I think, I think that um, that's, where, that's where we're going with the. What separates the great Rock Hill Boxing Club from any other boxing club that we have? What separates us, we're going to go to the basics. We're going to go to the foundation of boxing is, is heart. You got to have the heart. You got to have the heart. And, 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 and I think that pretty much everything that I'm, I'm going to say, it, it pertains to some part of the heart. Uh, you got to have the heart to box. You got to have the heart to, to, to come in the gym from a long day's work because some people classify working all day as working out. So, you know, it's, it's not the same. You got to have the, that fortitude. And, and, I, and I try to teach that from a young, from a very young age, uh, as young as they can come in. Um, we start boxing at, at age eight, okay. but if they can come in and, and, and just kind of sit around and look at what's going on, I, I always encourage it. I do. And um, usually on a daily basis, we have guys in the neighborhood, they come by, especially younger guys, they come by, they, they don't participate, they don't want to box, but they want to look at what's going on. They're very inspired by the hard work that they see the guys in the gym boxing uh, are, are, are doing. Uh, are, some of the, the, the younger guys that are losing the weight. Um, and weight loss is another uh, thing that, you know, parents are bringing their kids into the gym uh, to do because, you know, of course, they, they play a lot of video games and, and, and whatnot and, and, and just being in the house. And they're not outside like they used to be when I was, when I was younger. And I'm pretty sure probably when you were younger mm -hmm. as well. They, the kids are inside more. And inside, it creates less activity. So they bring them in the gym. To, to, to increase their activity and increase the output. So, Describe a basic, like two weeks prior to a boxing event, how do you get that individual prepared for that match? Two weeks, we've, um, and two weeks out, we've, we've relaxed. We're, we're gonna continue to relax. Relaxing, relaxing is, is, is a big part of going through a boxing fight. Um, we relax. We, um, we of course, we, we turn up the heat. Uh, and when I say turn up the heat, we, we're going to work out hard. We're going to work out hard, but a week prior to, we calm it down. We, we, we ease off on the work and we focus more on just simple strategies, thought process, relaxing, um, common sense, real common sense type stuff that a lot of people would, would just miss when they're overthinking, when they're overdoing it, when they're, when they're, when they're trying to be more than, than the situation requires. So uh, two weeks prior, we're going to relax. We're going to, we're going to condition, of course, the first week uh, before, and then the last week leading down to, we're going to simply work on just movement. Uh, we're going to work on defense. We're going to work where, uh, uh, at that point, conditioning is not, is not a case. Um, so we're, we're not necessarily focusing and homing on conditioning, but we are focusing on the, the technical, mental aspects of boxing itself. Okay, you're teaching amateur boxing. What is the difference between the amateur boxing and the professional boxing? Amateur boxing, um, it, it scored a little different. Amateur boxing, um, the, the rings, the, the, the judges, they're looking more so on points, uh, points and scores and punches thrown and volume. Uh, in professional boxing, they're looking at you know punches landing and 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 being able to be a, a real technician in what you're doing. 
um, the, the professional league, they're, they're trying to, uh, where the amateur league is trying to get more tailored to the professional league at this point, and they're, they're starting to go with no headgear, and, and um, you know, they, they increase the rounds and whatnot but doing open competition. But um, the main difference is, is how the judges are judging these fights. When you have a young fighter, how do you discipline them to get prepared for their boxer, their opponent? When I have a young fighter, I let them be who they are. I don't, I don't, I don't try to impose me on them. I don't, I don't, I, I let them be who they are. If, if, if they come in and they are, they are, you know, they put on a facade, but by the time we get ready for a fight, I know who they are, and I just encourage. The, the positive aspects of who they are to continue to encourage that. That way, when they go in the ring, they're confident in who they are. And when, when, when the times get tough and, and they begin to uh, they have some difficult moments in that, in that ring, I continue to encourage them of who they are because we're going to continue to work on that. See, I, I believe that everybody has a different way of boxing. I don't believe that I can teach one way of boxing to everybody. I can teach I can teach the fundamentals to everybody, but it, since everybody walk, talk, act, and think differently, then we have to go according to who they are. And I think a great coach will 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 be able to to influence whoever. I, I feel like I can. You can come in the gym in a wheelchair, and I can teach you how to box. Mm. That's what I feel like. So you have a lot of confidence in yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's I have a lot of confidence. Why should the community get more involved into the boxing? area um I, I just think that boxing is if you've ever grew up in you know going in school and there's a fight if you go into school and there's a fight everybody wants to see the big fight Correct. If, if two big guys or, or, or two tough guys are fighting one day you might want to counsel class because everybody wants to see that fight I think boxing it has that much fighting has that much of an impact and and people show that much respect to guys that are that are that are disciplined, but the guys that just fight. Um, and, and not only that, I think that every culture of people, every culture don't play basketball, baseball, and football. But growing up, every culture of people fight. You you're going to have some 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 fighting at, at at some point, whether it's your brother, whether it's your neighbor, whether it's your friend, or whoever it is, you're going to have. That, and that, that goes across the world, worldwide. Um, I just, I, I think that overall, uh, my community, as well as any community, they, 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 they're the underdog. Mm -hmm. I think that, that those, those, the children in the community, the, the people in the community, sometimes they, they're the underdog. And being the underdog, you got to have them fight. And that's where I think boxing comes in at. I think that boxing uh, is it, not only a, a, a physical sport, but it's, again, it's, it's very mental. I think it's very mental. I know when you're teaching these fighters and when there's time for the, them to get, actually get into the ring, the family, how do you keep the family from getting on you about their child or their loved one? Um, I, honestly, I don't have that problem, not too much right now. I, I don't have that problem. Um, I, I, I let my boxers know that I always have their best interest at, at, at heart. Um, if they're training and, and I don't think that they're prepared, mm -hmm. I don't put them in the ring. If, if, they, if they are training and they don't think they're prepared, I don't put them in the ring. I'm patient enough to wait till they're prepared and they're ready to do what they want to do before I put them in there. Now, the, the, the children, I, I don't have that problem, but I, I've seen others that